Well, new horse has arrived. Went very, very well. She's having her first drink of water. Oh, maybe not. Look. She's an Arab, an Arabian five-year-old. Chilling out. She's got macaroni spot next to Peggy. Macaroni's going there, but for now, those two, <laughs> him and Luke, are goofing off in the arena. Well, not right now, but they were. For now, they're just chilling out in the sun. Doing nothing. The amount of quiet that's going on around here. I put uh, the new horse in with Luke, see how they would do, and uh, they did very well. She's very calm, lovely disposition, good looking horse. I think she'll get along just fine with everybody here. The <laughs> boys. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to feature her a little bit more in the near future. But for now, we're just gonna let her settle in. There she is. Just always kind of looking around a little and checking things out. Sniffing, very inquisitive. Which is kind of cool to see. There you go, everybody. Now I've got to get back to my zillion tasks over the next 12 hours. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Still doing nothing. Still just chilling out. Oh, the action started up. And that's it. Okay, guys. Oh, it's getting close to the end of the day. Um, Pretty busy day, pretty productive. Some trimming done, some training done. Um, because it's out and about, I tend not to take my camera with me because it's not, uh, not my property. But anyways, I wanted to do a couple of Q and A uh, items. I get a lot of questions, and I don't always have time to write out um, sort of the longer answer, something that would, I don't know, make a little bit more sense if I just explained it directly to you guys so you can listen to it because uh, sometimes writing it out doesn't get across exactly what I mean. Um, I'm going to cover three things. They're, they're good ones. Uh, the first question comes in, um, what do you think of trainers using a whip uh, to hit the ground next to their horses during training? That's a good question. Um, you see a lot of aids like that whips or flags maybe, ropes and stuff like that, being used in both good and bad ways. Um, this question is a bit of a tough one because it really, really, it really depends on the horse. It depends on whether or not that horse is listening, um, depends on whether or not that horse is safe or resistant, um, uh, or is posing a danger. And there may, there may be times when you have to be loud. Now, if I were to choose between if you had to hit the horse or if you could hit the ground, I would absolutely choose hit the ground. That's a given. I think a lot of people would, maybe some wouldn't, but the idea being that you would choose to make a loud noise or a loud movement beside or around the horse to get their attention. So that brings us to the next part of the question is, well, why did that person do that? What was the horse doing and what was the intention of the person doing the whipping on the ground? So if the, the, the old saying goes and, and where 
if you're training a horse, you really want to do as little as you can, as much as you have to. But as little as you can, as little. And you're always going to want to start with as little as you can. And if they don't clue into that, and they don't get it, and they're not following what you're what you're doing or picking up what you're putting down, well, then you have to get a little louder with the goal of getting quiet. So if if somebody had to hit the ground an awful lot and continue to do that, I would say that I wouldn't I wouldn't really think it's a great idea. I think there's there's there are, there's got to be a way to get quieter. Um, but there may be cases if a horse is is dangerous, which leads into well, why are they dangerous? It leads into the horse isn't paying attention. Well, why isn't it paying attention? What was done beforehand? Um, but uh, uh, it's hard to determine that over a uh, question. So I want to provide a bit of context to why I think that yes, sometimes it's good. Uh, and then other times I'll think that that's not such a great idea. But the concept around that and where I would sort of form my thoughts is that I want to get quiet as fast as I can. I don't want to be loud. The louder they get, the louder I will probably get. So if they get really loud, I'm going to get a little louder. And if they get quiet, I'm down here. But I'm going to be down here hoping they come join me. Hopefully that makes sense. You know, sometimes you got to be loud. But hopefully you don't. So, um, it's a big question and it really, it really requires context to answer it. So, Mr. Unknown, which is literally your name, it's not just, uh, I don't know your name. Um, if you can give me context to that, I can answer it better. Okay, uh, the uh, next question that I found oh, very interesting, and it was um, whether a horse, whether or not, whether or not horses understand ownership. Um, I think not, to, to put it in the most simplest terms. I don't think that horses have an idea that they are owned. I think they might have an idea that uh, they get food and that they can't leave where they are. Um, I think they have an idea of respect or, um, you know, an understanding that they need to follow direction or not, for that matter. And they'll understand their immediate surroundings, but the the horse brain uh, tends not to think too far ahead at all. Um, and there are a lot of studies on that um, that I haven't read, but have heard the gist of and from, from a few people that are real experts in the area. And the the idea of being owned would have to come from, I think, a concept that they themselves would be able to own something. Whereas it's more... Um, where they might feel like they want something solely, like a stallion might want a particular mare, uh, or the mare wants the baby. That's, that's sort of, I don't think that's ownership. I don't think they would understand that. But I do think that they would understand that they need to respect and follow, which came from a question of uh, whether or not horses understand whether or not to bite the hand that feeds them. No, I don't believe that at all. I think that uh, I've come across and helped quite a few people where their horses do bite them. And they do kick and they do push them over and they do hit them and they do strike them and they do walk through them. They don't care if you feed them. In fact, you ought to feed them faster as far as they're concerned, um, which is kind of scary. So not biting the hand that feeds them, horses are so short term, there's such a short term no planning involved in their lives. They just buy the moment. So um, they, they need to understand more that they should listen and respect and give you space when you ask for it, draw in when you, when you draw them. So anyway, so that's two questions, the one that's three. The last question I wanted to cover, which was um, a good one, and I think I might do a second Q&A because there's a bunch of little ones that I mean, I have my, my tablet with me. I, I could scroll through here, but um, the big ones really popped out. And the last one is there's a, a lady, at least I think it's a lady, who's going to um, uh, a, a university, a, an equine university over in Ontario. That way, <laughs> east, that way's west. Um, and uh, studying the, the farm management and... and um, what was it? It was 
equine, it was an equine um, course, understanding the legal responsibilities of managing a barn for horses. And it's one of my thoughts on that. And I've done a couple of videos on this already. I'll see if I can find them, link them below if you're interested in checking that out. Um, the more and more I watch other people, talk to other people, the longer that I do it, um, gives me a more solid foundation to draw these thoughts from and experience to, to give to you guys if you're wondering what I might go about doing things um, or the people around me have done things. Zeus is barking. I don't know what he's barking at. Zeus! Come here! Probably a squirrel. Mr. Squirrel Hunter. Anyhow, um, so the, 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 the idea of, of, of what you're responsible for morally and legally is how I responded. There is a moral and legal responsibility that comes with having a barn and managing some horses that aren't yours. Um, and I've been to quite a few barns where they're, they're a lot more paycheck barns, you know, they, it doesn't matter how the owners keep their horses um, as long as everything is covered legally, which is usually a contract. If you're going to own a barn, if you're going to run a barn, if you're going to manage a place um, or, and own it, if you're just a barn manager, well, you just do your job, um, uh, mostly. And then, but if you own it, uh, you're going to need a proper contract, a contract that says, that indemnifies you from, you know, the, the injuries that can occur uh, and will occur, for that matter. Um, but uh, but the, the legal and moral responsibilities that you have are separate, mostly. You, I mean, morally, you have to follow the law. But, uh, you know, as long as you've covered yourself on a contract level, you've covered yourself um, in regards to whether the horse gets hurt, you get hurt, your, any of your helpers get hurt, people who... <laughs> He's chewing on a stick now. The, uh, the um, what did I say? The, you, owners, any helpers, and the horse, and any visitors. As long as you've covered yourself there, you know, it's, it's being around horses can be dangerous, and people need to understand that, respect that, sign away their life on it, <laughs> kind of idea. Uh, and then get insurance. Absolutely, 100%, make sure insurance is in place um, for injuries and activities that you're up to. Morally, though, it is a whole different ball game. And as I said, there's a lot of barns that are just paycheck. They don't care how the owners keep their horses as long as they keep their horses there and the money comes in, feed them, clean up after them, call it a day, right? Um, but there are a lot of other barns that aren't like that. And they care very much whether or not somebody is hurting their horse, they're not caring for their horse. I mean, I've been to a place where a lady had the SPCA called on her um, because she wouldn't treat her horse's abscess in the teeth. I mean, it, it was pretty bad. It was bad for quite a while. And so a vet finally came out and solved that problem. But she was kind of forced to do it. You know, so whether that's up to the barn or there's a bunch of people at the barn that sort of encourage the barn manager or the owner to do those kinds of things, um, you know, it's... It's, I'd say there's more of those than less. At least I'd like to hope so. Um, morally, I think that as a caregiver of animals, um, you should have a pretty high bar. And money shouldn't be the blockage to whether or not you say something that you know and can prove. It's not just an opinion, it's not just anecdotal advice. This is very, very important. If you're going to give advice, if you're going to stand on some kind of moral ground, it must be backed up by facts, by science. Um, if, if, a, if a horse is under your care and the owner is just constantly feeding uh, sweet feed and the horse is getting obese, I believe that there's a moral obligation to say, your horse is quite obese. Uh, I can't allow you to do that here, in my place. I have a set of standards that says you must keep your horse in good health. Um, and so, you know, hopefully you do have that freedom to do such a thing. 
you know, and, and, and the line, there are lines to be drawn, of course. You can't say everything that you think because people are allowed to do what they want with their horses. But maybe you'd say, you can't do it here. So there would be your moral obligation. And the legal obligation there, if it is abuse, um, is to report it. Um, and abuse might be, you know, beating a horse or not dealing with its wounds to where it's uh, gone lame uh, or infected uh, in a very bad way. And um, you got to have some knowledge around that area. Again, it comes back to science. You can prove that the horse is doing very poorly. You know, catalog it. Pictures and notes and stuff like that help the enforcement agencies to come along and say, look, you know, it's been noted that you should be doing this. You've been suggested to do this by the person that owns the place. They, you know, kind of certify themselves as a knowledgeable person or happen to be quite certified in that area. Um, I mean, we're certified here with uh, equine first aid and normal first aid. Uh, so we have a pretty good idea of how things work inside the body and why they work that way. Um, so, you know, it's a big question. It's a hard one. Uh, it could be kind of controversial. Uh, but it's of my opinion that I think that every barn should be raising their standards all the way. I mean, I've been to some places where, where uh, you know, uh, definitely wouldn't approve whatsoever of how the horses are being treated. Um, when they do something wrong, they'll really, really be hurt, physically hurt. And it's painful to watch. Uh, and, uh, and, and you can't help but think there's some places that just accept that, that's just normal. And a lot of places that don't, and those places that don't are going up as the standards go a little bit higher. So morally and legally, you're gonna have to kind of figure out your moral side, legally, it's all there, put it on paper. Um, and, uh, and keep documentation for those reasons. To protect yourself, to protect the horses, and um, make sure that you've made yourself understood from the get-go if you have people coming to you. And they're like, look, I'm bringing my horse. And like, okay, just wanna let you know, high standard of health around this place, and I'd like you know, to be able to talk to you about that. And a lot of people will be very open to it. Some aren't, but a lot of people are. So, I'm gonna leave that there. Let's go. Uh, Oh, let's go say hi to the new girl one more time. I know this has kind of been long, but uh, I know I chitty chat a lot. Let's go say hi again, though. What the heck? She's been pretty good all day, you know? She arrived here pretty happy. Um, very just quiet and content. Cruised around with Luke a little. And uh, now she's just... Yeah, just hanging out. She's not quite good with the green hay bag, but she did, I gave her a purple hay bag. So we've talked about, I'm gonna link below um, the, uh, the hay bag conversation that I've had um, on how to get horses used to hay bags that aren't really used to them. She's not used to this type. Hi, you made it over, hello. Pretty girl. Very friendly. Yeah, quite friendly. Good looking horse. Um, so I'll link I'll link below uh, how um, how to get a horse used to. <laughs> You're adorable. Yeah, even your big ears. Um, how to get a horse used to uh, a small hold hay bag in the end? Because right now she's she's not quite cool with it. But she'll get there. She is sort of munching away at it, so she's kind of picking away. And uh, you can kind of tell, just like baby Gracie did, um, the, the hay bag gets really solid as they sort of push it with their nose and sort of compress it in a bit. It's hard to explain, but she'll get there. So I'll give her another hay bag pretty quick here to augment that one. Some of them a little bit bigger holes, but... Uh, Ah, she's a good little thing. So there you go. New horse. A couple of question and answers answered. Questions answered. Okay. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, and Luke's over here now. I moved him a bit so he could, they could all be in line. Just a really quick thing. Why is it so dark on the screen? Um, this way that they're all in a line like so. And uh, so she feels, so the new horse can feel like she's got a lot of buddies just hanging out, chilling out with her. 
So, okay guys, uh, I'm gonna end it there. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you guys tomorrow.